What's going on, everybody? Hitman Channing here again with another Pokemon trading card game online deck tech. Today, we're taking a look on PTCG Live at Farigarath EX. And I know you're immediately thinking, John, why would you want to play Farigarath EX? This is like a bulk EX card. There's like no redeeming qualities to it. Well, I would actually argue something differently. Right now on the ladder, there's a lot of that Turbo Iron Hands deck running around, a lot of Chen Pao, and a lot of other decks that rely on those basic Pokemon EX. And Farigarath's ability Armor Tail actually just stops those Pokemon from attacking it all together and its attack dirty beam is okay you can do 160 damage for three energy and 30 to one of your opponent's bench pokemon as well potentially setting up for some multi ko's so we're playing for rigorath in this deck with the zatu engine clairvoyant sense will let us attach a basic psychic from our hand to one of our pokemon and draw two cards so we can use it to power up for rigorath's attack then we attack with Farigarath, a couple of this with like disruption like judge iono airy all that good stuff and you got a pretty awesome deck on your hands i'm really really loving this deck and i can't wait to show it off to you in the video so we're just gonna hop right in get some dubs with farigraph ex just want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of the channel ptcgl store if you need codes you know where to go head over to ptcgostore.com and use code hitmon to get five percent off your order you get a good product for a good price and you help out the channel as well so thank you to the sponsor for supporting me and thanks to you for supporting me too and now we'll get right back into the video we get to call a coin flip here tails never fails as i always say and we're gonna flip that coin and it's going to be tails which means that we can secure our place going first we want to we got a lot of guys to evolve we want to go first get set up a little bit that turn to farigraph is really important here and we got a pretty solid starting hand nothing really to complain about to be honest um see what our opponent is on and what our opponent is cooking and that will be our uh, claim to fame this match. Yeah, like I got the draft rig, I can get two more down, and then I can earthen vessel, grab myself some more, uh, some energies to work with, see what we're up against. And it's an iron hands, so it looks like it's gonna be turbo hands, that'd be my guess. The research is really solid right now. Um, we'll start with the nest ball, like it's definitely gonna be a Natu, and definitely gonna be a giraffe rig. A lot of these cards are good here. Um, but I'm thinking how I want to do this. I actually might want to chuck this research away. And I want to hold this town store. I want to get rid of the research because now I can attach to... We'll save that giraffe rig. We'll attach to this giraffe rig. And we'll just pass. I want to save this league headquarters and I'm going to tell you why. First off is if they have a town store in their opening hand, they've got seven cards to work with. They might, and then that just kind of nullifies it. However... Keeping the league headquarters for later, I think is very important because when their resources are a lot more strained and they've moved other energies around, it can be a really tough time to get them to power up their Pokemon. They looks like they have everything here. There's a town store I was talking about, so it would have just been completely useless if we dropped the league headquarters right now. It's you're kind of just praying, but now that we know they're down a town store, we know what their hand kind of looks like. We know they're getting a knockout this turn on or not to. And powering up this Iron Hands. The League Headquarters plus Iono combo is going to be a lot stronger, I think. Um, just, just literally just a peak acceleration. I, I could have kept the research, but it's almost a toss-up. Are they playing Turbo Hands? Are they playing Future Box? We know they're playing Future Box right now. So I'm kind of okay to give them that extra card. Um, if it means that, you know, whatever they got in their hands going to the bottom. And I think we can lead safely with this Natu here. And we, once we establish our Farigarath, we should just be okay. Speaking of the Farigarath himself, there he is. And let's just check the deck with Town Store really quickly. Vitality Band can be important. Also just good to thin that out of the deck while we are here. It's going to let us do a lot more effective two shots with our um, double turbo energy. Doesn't look like we're missing a whole lot of stuff. Our Prime Catcher's there. We've got a good chunk of the energy. Some of them are gone. But we can throw that Vitality Band on this for Rigorath here. And I'm thinking I'll definitely drop the League Headquarters. I kind of just want to go for the Iono here. Yeah, I'll just go for the Iono. We'll see what we get. Would be nice if I could bring up that... Um, what's it called? If I could bring up that Iron Hands... Or sorry, the Iron Crown on the bench. We have the Counter Catcher to do that. But we're really going to need to get ourselves a um what's it called an attachment of some sort or a switch we get buddy buddy which is not necessarily what i want i'll drop this other not to i'll counter catcher up that crown and i think it might just be a pass for me yeah i don't want to necessarily risk too much here uh we another energy in this hand really would have been nice but we have the tools to kind of allow our energies to flow more freely if that makes sense like now we can lead the farigarath 
uh, disrupt them a little bit. They, we, they've gotten rid of a town store. They've gotten rid of a future booster energy capsule. Even though they play four, they probably only play one town store. So this league headquarters might stick forever and that'll make it really tough for them. Couple of that with that the fact that this iron crown is actually weak to dark and we can actually do a little bit of damage to their board state here. Here's an electric generator. It is turbo hands it looks like, but they have the grass energy for the iron leaves. Um, so we'll just kind of see what they're working with. There's a research that they got off the top. Getting rid of hands, getting rid of an Iono. They didn't want to Iono us there. Weren't too concerned about those resources. There is their future booster energy capsule. An Iron Leaves, which is going to go down. I doubt they'll use the ability. Yeah, I didn't think that they would put that into the active. They're going to attach to it though. And that's kind of concerning because Farigarath is weak to grass. So if they power that up with Maridon, we might be in a little bit of a pickle here. Um, they are down one grass energy though, so if they've prized anything, for example, we could see something a little successful, but they are just going to retreat. They didn't realize that League Headquarters was still in play, it looks like. Unfortunately for us though, we don't have the greatest of hands. Speaking of hands, I'm going to counter catcher up theirs, and hopefully this can stick for another turn. Um, I'm kind of okay just leaving these cards in my hand, I'll just have to pass. Like another one of those energies would have been really nice right about now. Start drawing through the deck a little bit, but that's okay. If we can get that to stick, they do have the other future booster energy capsule though. They have an Iono, so they did need to just kind of wash that hand away and they're gonna start uh, giving us some fresh new cards. Fresh new cards we can make really good work with. Here's a generator that is gonna go and they're not gonna whip it, but do they have the means to attack this turn? That is the question. They can't even use arm press because of that league headquarters. They do have the attack, but they're actually opting to pass over it looks like by attaching it to the iron leaves. So that's a bit interesting. Um, an interesting call there for sure. We have the airy, which I'm actually going to use. I think I'm partial to that airy right now. We'll attach here. We have another giraffe rig we can bench. But right now, all they need to do is get through both giraffe rigs or get through just a um, two Natus and a giraffe rig. So I think I'm fine to just start powering it up. We have Psychic Assault's utility here in case we want to use it, not necessarily. We can boss something up as well, but I don't necessarily want... I mean, maybe I do want to boss the leaves up. I don't know, because it's not like it's going to be able to attack very well. Or I could boss the crown up, get rid of that crown. That's like my other option. Or the airy. I'm kind of partial to using the airy here, to be honest. I think the airy might be a little stronger. Because then we can two hit this Iron Hands after if we boss something else. Yeah, I'm, I like the airy here. Getting rid of the radar is fine. They have Arvin, which isn't great. But we can still Dirty Beam. And we could put 30 damage somewhere else. And this 30 damage going on the Iron Leaves could be pretty good. Again, they can get Arvin. They can use Arvin, um, which can net them a way to get rid of the Stadium if they play Lost Vacuum. I'm really hoping they don't. A lot of these lists aren't really playing Lost Vacuum, um, but we'll see what they get here. Then if they get the KO with that Iron Leaves, it can attack next turn. It cannot attack next turn. So I'm probably going to end up Ionoing them to like three, and then I'll power up this Giraffe Rig and then swing into the Leaves while also putting chip damage on the hands. And if they can't move that leaves, I'll destroy the hands, destroy the leaves. But they're opting to go for a Prime Catcher here. And the Prime Catcher is pretty interesting, um, you know, because it's going to mean that they... Like, what does this mean for them? I don't understand quite what they're doing. They're bringing the Zatu up, going up with the Marano. Do they have another energy, though? They do have the other energy. Okay, so they have the other energy. The thing is, is they're not actually going to get the KO on our... Um, uh, Zatu, which is really good here, requires them to do a little bit more in order to uh, get the KOs. They got to work a little bit harder to do so. They're going to power up that leaves, power up that hands. That way they can attack with one of them if they attach to it. But now I'm thinking the way I want to work this is it's definitely going to be a boss angle. Um, in terms of energy, only one is discarded. I think I'm okay to kind of sacrifice a retreat here. I don't want to whiff the retreat. This is important that we get this off here. Ultra Ball, getting rid of these two. The Ultra Ball can net me this for Rigoraf for later. Because it could also Psychic Assault. But I think at this point, I'd like to Super Rod just put back some of these energies. 
And right now, I'll boss. Could boss the hands, take a KO. Could boss the crown and take a KO. If I boss the crown, like that would be 140. Now, I think bossing the leaves is the best play here. Because the chances that they can move it later are, like, pretty slim. Then I will go and put damage on this hands. I'll do 170 to this leaves as well. I can take a nice multi-prize KO next turn. Worst case scenario, if I just get a single energy, I can Psychic Assault and just hit them really hard. There's their other energy, and they're gonna be able to knock out this Farigarath here. But like I said, I'm not super worried. We can go for the Iono. We can go ahead and take out this leaves, take out the hands on the bench if we can draw decently enough. And then Bob's your uncle, as they say, we should be able to win. Yeah, it's really tough for them to kind of come back from that after I would just Iono them. Boom, there we go. Farigarath, again, beating the big basics of Future Box. Our opponent has called the flip. It was Tails, and Tails did not fail, so they won the flip. And it's going to have to, you know, come down to whether they want us to go first or second. They're going to go first. This deck that we're playing actually does want to go first as well. However, going second is not too bad because you can get that turn one Judge or the turn one Airy like we have here to hopefully disrupt some of their key pieces. We got the lead with the Giraffe rig here. And we're just going to see what we are up against. It is a Lost Zone deck. I was like, whoa, what kind of deck is this? It's a Lost Zone deck. And we're going to take a look and see what exactly they're playing. They got that Buddy Buddy Poffin to get some comfies out. They have some switch cards, I'm sure, to help them with those flower selectings. And now it really does depend what exactly we are up against here. Um, there's another switch card coming down. Getting that other comfy in the active. They got rid of a counter catcher. Counter catcher could be Sablezard. This could be something a little bit sooner. They got rid of a Manaphy, which is good for us. There's a lightning energy. This signals to me that it's a lost box variant. And there's going to retreat. Go for that flower selecting. And then they're likely going to pass it on over to us. Um, and we're going to see what they do. Get rid of a Buddy Buddy Poffin. And that's a pass. Okay, so the Airy, I mean, I wouldn't really like to use it now, but I kind of don't, I kind of feel like I do not have that much of a choice. I mean, I think we can start with this Nest Ball. Get one of our Natsus down for sure. Start with another Nest Ball. And we'll get this Giraffe Rig down. Um, and then we can literally, we'll just attach. Then we'll go for the Airy. See what they're working with. These are two really strong hits because it, this signals to me that their hand is actually really bad. So they can get a flower selecting, attach retreat, get another flower selecting. But I actually think it's like nearly impossible for them to get a, um, what's it called? A turn to Mirage Gate. They have the moon in hand, they have the Poffin, they have the Sableye. Uh, or the moon, the moon, the bundle in the Sableye, sorry. So they can use those guys to get going here. They're going to flower select, get rid of a rod, see what they get. There's a switch card, so that's what they got off the top. This is going to be really helpful in knowing what exactly they're working with. Um, another flower selecting coming down here, getting rid of that heavy ball. There's the attachment. This is likely the retreat here. And yeah, then they'll be able to get to six in the lost zone. Unless they find a chorus off the top, that's also possible. I mean, they've dug through a lot of their deck. No Poke Gears or anything like that, though. So we'll see what exactly they do. It could be a choice between the Colorus or one of their good attackers. Again, Roaring Moon could be a bit of a challenge for us because it does go through for Giraffe's ability with that Frenzied Gouging. But here comes a Nest Ball with, um, and that's likely probably going to get them. A Cram would be my guess. Then they can Cram this Giraffe Rig and it will go down. Um, but they're actually not going to do that. They're just going to opt to whiff it. And that's pretty good for us. We can start this off with this Buddy Buddy Poffin. We can get Natu. We can get Manaphy as well. I don't quite want to risk getting hit by a Radiant Greninja at any point. So we'll do this. We can evolve into our Natu here. Then Clairvoyant Sense. Start powering our Giraffe Rig up on the bench. We get this for Rigoraph, but I do want to go for a Mew play here. So I'm actually going to discard it. And I'm going to get Mew because I want to draw some cards here. Um, we have a lot of supporters we can get, a lot of, you know, cards that can help us out, help us start attacking this turn. Restart's gonna get us the Iono, which is really, really good, so we'll drop this League Headquarters, go for the Iono. I mean, we can probably get, like, a Switch, we can get some good stuff going here. Um, no Switch, but we do get the Double Turbo Energy. So, curious, maybe I think I'd actually like to do this and go... Oh, because the League Headquarters, I can't do anything. Never mind. We'll just pass. 
Um, at least we can preemptively prepare for a retreat next turn. They can go for the Cramorant potentially. Uh, we put their Roaring Moon to the bottom of their deck. They, their hand was kind of dead, so that could be good or bad, you know, depending on how we look at it here. But right now, like overall, I'm thinking this is an okay spot to be in. I'm expecting this Giraffe Rig to go down. I did want to just prepare it anyway, though. So if it gets knocked out, we have this Giraffe Rig on the bench to prepare us to start um, attacking. Now, our opponent's got to be weary here. If they put their Radiant Greninja down, there are we have the potential to use Mew to, K to use its attack and then KO two of their comfies. So we just gotta keep that in mind. They gotta keep that in mind, which is really, really strong for us. They're getting rid of the Hoopa EX, which could have been a really strong attacker here, but it doesn't do anything because of Draft Rig's ability. There comes an Artisan bumping that League Headquarters and the Artisan's likely gonna grab them a Sableye to start um, going around with that lost mine. And yeah, Sableye can be a little bit of a nuisance to us. Luckily, we have the second League Headquarters um, here. So we'll see what they got. They got that switch cart. So they're going to go into the save life, start spreading some damage around. I am i don't really mind if they knock out this Natu, to be completely honest. The only kind of bad thing is they can knock out the Natu and the Manaphy, which will give us a little bit of a tough time if they decide to put Greninja down. But Greninja, as I said earlier, will be able to help us out in um, letting us KO their Pokemon. They're getting rid of that Natu, and I'm yeah, like I expected, they're getting rid of the Manaphy. Um, and now here, we're going to need to have a little bit, like there's going to be a little bit of trouble here in terms of how we take the rest of the knockouts here. Uh, we want to get this mana feat established once again, but we'll just wait and see what exactly we are working with. I know League Headquarters is really, really strong. I think I want to start off though, um, we'll use the Artisan for a little deck search. Like I could get another Natu. I don't know, it's tough at this point. But I think I almost don't need the other Natu. Giraffe Ray could be good because Psychic Assault will like let us easily one hit KO Roaring Moon. We can also do that with a Zatu or the other Farigaraf. So I think I might just whiff this. I'll start off with the Clairvoyant Sense. Get Iono, get DTE. Nothing too crazy. I think I'm okay to retreat. Okay, I'm okay to actually attach this to Mew. Then go for the Iono. We really need to find our Giraffe or our Farigaraf here, um, which we shouldn't have had. Yeah, we didn't, didn't have a problem doing so. We shouldn't have had a problem doing so regardless. Uh, I will get rid of an energy. I do want to keep that Ultra Bomb. I do have the other Farigaraf in here as a good single prize attacker that Cramorant can't KO. Um, but I think right now I'm fine to just stick with this. I can Ultra Ball again to try and find a switching card. And I think I will, because I know it's more powerful. I can get this for Rigoraf online. And the reason that I'm waiting to like retreat, obviously, is because I might find the switch off of Mew here, which I don't, but that's completely okay. We can retreat and then we can go for Dirty Beam. Now I'm using Dirty Beam. Um, I like to use it with the three Psychics because then I can put 30 damage instead of just 10 damage on our opponent's Pokemon. And we can start setting up for some multi KOs here. Um, on our opponents. The boss's orders is really strong as well. Again, I don't think League Headquarters stops Cramorant from um, attacking because it says that there's ignore all energy in this attack cost. So League Headquarters, they can still punch us with the Cramorant. They are going to get a bump for it though with the Artisan. That kind of sucks because that's both our League Headquarters down. And they have the Iron Bundle here. The Iron Bundle can enable them to force us to switch something, but they don't have a whole lot of resources right now. So we'll see what exactly they do. We're going to start with that flower selecting here and we'll see what they can actually accomplish. They're getting rid of the rock sand. I think they're going to go for any more aggressive um, game plan this time around. And yeah, the iron bundle could be a little bit of a challenge for us, but we'll see what they get here because they can, you know, hyper blower us. That's fine. And I'm thinking I'll just bring the Mew up because, well, then, then again, like they could be baiting the... Um, Roaring Moon. They could be baiting the Roaring Moon. I could go for the Farigaraf and just retreat it after. That might even be the better play. I'll just go up with the Farigaraf. Um, just in case they're debating going the Roaring Moon, then they'll have the Gouging and we can boss up something else. Gouging up the um, or Dirty Beam the Roaring Moon to get KO'd. There's a Super Rod, which I'm guessing they're going to get Sableye. And oop, 
bundle back, but no, I think they just got energy. They got Sableye and energy, okay. And they got Artisan, get that Sableye out, opt to start spreading more damage. Yeah, getting this Zatu out of play can be a bit of an issue for us, but there is their, uh, what's it called? There is their Roaring Moon. Now the Roaring Moon might be a little bit of a challenge for us, as I said, they're gonna start prepping it. They can go retreat with the Comfy. Um, yeah, they're not going to have two gates here. They can go Sableye. Sableye can knock out our Zatu, which won't be great. Uh, abs, you know, absolutely will not be nice. Um, and I'm expecting that to happen. Then I don't know where the rest of the damage will go, though, to be honest. Maybe it'll go on a Farigaraf, probably the one with energy on it. That'd be my guess. But it's kind of wasted damage. There's not much they can do there. And now, yeah, they're going to have to go through a Farigraph at some point here. We're not going to put, be putting any more single prizers into play. Um, we can retreat with this double turbo here. And I think that's a fine play to make. I don't want to use the boss just yet. Yeah, I think that's fine. I didn't want to risk getting hit by the Frenzy Gouging. I don't want to use the boss. We'll just go for the Dirty Beam, and the Dirty Beam is going to put another 30 onto this Comfy here. Taking out the Sableye. The Sableye is obviously the biggest threat. Now they can use Roaring Moon to um, get a knockout on us or something like that. And yeah, if they got the Frenzy Gouging knockout, knockout here, it could be a little bit tough because we do only play three DTEs. One of them is uh, left in the deck. So we can like return the Roaring Moon, but we're not gonna be able to power up another Farigaraph. So if they get the second Mirage Gate here, that will be a bit tough. Thankfully though, they used one, we got rid of one with Airy. So the chances of that happening aren't the highest. Um, so we'll have to see what exactly they do. Again, the low card hand is really good for us. And yeah, they might opt to leave this, just leave this Comfy in the active. But what I would like to do is if they decide to spit with Cram or something like that, I'd like to get another attachment off on this Farigaraf. They're going to go into the other Comfy, which kind of tells me they have a switch card in hand, or else I would have just left the Comfy in the active spot. Then I'd like to go for the Iono, make their hand a lot, lot lower. Again, two Super Rods for them down is pretty good. There's a Dark Energy on the Moon, and a Prime Catcher going to bring up... Curious, I'm curious, I'm curious. What is it going to bring up here? The Mew makes sense. I could have seen that coming for sure. They're going to just spit with the Cram though, which I actually find very interesting here. They can go for the spit, then they're going to try and do like a Sableye play, whatever, afterwards. That's really fine with me. I'm really okay with that because they're going to need to go for a Gouging play and then we can just KO with the other Farigaraf. However, we're going to be needing to get more attachments off, which can be a little bit of an issue. Um... There is a Super Rod play. Sableye and some energy. That makes sense. They're going to Artisan out that Sableye most definitely. And maybe the play here though, because they already have such a low hand, maybe the play is we let them do the spit. We attach this energy to the Farigaraph. Right? So let, okay, let's Artisan first before I become any more silly. We have the other double turbo, so we can still get an attack off with the other Farigaraf here. But maybe we do this. We can Ultra Ball these away. We're not really going to need them. Um, we can just kind of whiff that. If we boss up the Roaring Moon here. Hit them with the Farigaraf. Like we can also just restart, draw a little bit more here. Judge is going to be good for the following turns. I'll just whiff this nest ball. It's not really needed. But now we can Dirty Beam 160. Knock this Comfy out. And we prep this Moon. So if they gouging, they just get knocked out. And we just literally just need to hit anything for game. Super Rod's pretty solid too. Because now next turn, like they can obviously go for the Roaring Moon. They need to find themselves a, um, what's it called? They'll need to find themselves a boss or something like that. If they have it in hand, they have it in hand. Or they can just gouge and knock themselves out. And we just got to find our double turbo to win the game. So we have options here. Um, to do that, again, that Frenzied, Ga or what's it called? That Calamity Storm, not going to be able to hit for Rigoraf because of its ability. They'll have to Frenzied Gouging, which they do. And guess what? See, we read them like a book, like a book. They were read and that Roaring Moon is out of here. So that's going to get knocked out for us. Now we're basically both 
at one prize remaining, it comes down to me finding that double turbo energy at this point in order to secure the W. So we're gonna, we'll lead with the Mew EX here. It is our turn. And really that is what it's gonna come down to. They have the Mew, like the Sableye play. So it's worth us just burning a bunch of cards. We have the one double turbo in the deck and that's kind of going to be how we win our game. So it's it's important that we optimally thin everything out here. We can go for this Artisan, the Giraffe Rig, and it's best if we just play the Judge. There's no need to do the Iono. Play the Judge. We hope we find our double turbo, and that's going to be how we do it. We find the double turbo, very thankfully, and that is the game against Lost Box. See, it did come in handy. Like the Ferrigraph's ability was very, very strong and really worth it to help us close out that game there. Our final prize is the Nest Ball and we get the first dub of the day with Ferrigraph. So what do you think of my Ferrigraph EX deck? This deck is a ton of fun to play and I actually think it's pretty strong right now playing on the ladder. If you're expecting a lot of um, Lost Box, a lot of Future Box or Turbo Hands, a lot of Chen Pao, Ferrigraph is a really strong card. However, when cards like Charizard exist, when Char when cards like Arceus exist, and when you're weak to grass and Iron Leaves exists, well, Iron Leaves can't actually do anything to us, but um, when some of those cards exist, there is nothing that they can do to kind of, like, there's nothing you can do to kind of beat those cards. You know, specifically, it's like Arceus is a really tough matchup. Charizard's 30% meta share right now. That's a really tough matchup because they just two-shot you and then they eventually one-shot you and you, like, barely are able to two-shot them. So it can be a bit tough for sure. Something that can help you beat Charizard if you played, um, you know, like, a Radiant Charizard combo, which you can pile a lot of damage on with the single prizer. You can use Mew in the late game, like you, or you can Ferrigarath for 170 or something, then use the Giraffe Rig for like 100 and, what's a, what would that be, 190? And that'll KO Charizard. There's combos you can do here and there that will be able to allow this Ferrigarath deck to kind of deal with a lot of situations. That's what I really like right now. We have a lot of cards that support Ferrigarath. Zatu is really, really pr the perfect partner for it. And you have the baby Ferrigarath. -fer for, for Rigoraf as well. Either face is really good attack, which will kind of disrupt your opponent if you don't have any disruption cards or reset yourself, but it's mostly in here as a good attacker as a single prizer. It's 140 damage, power beam for 130. Um, is really good, solid numbers, and you can survive a hit from things like Cramorant. Um, in terms of what I would change, not too much I would change from this deck. I really do like having the Prime Catcher in here, but I can see an argument for Hero's Cape as well. Hero's Cape can be a really clutch card, um, but the rest of the list is really, really strong. I'm really a big fan, and with all of a sudden done, thank you so much for watching. Like if you enjoyed, and comment down below. What do you think of my Frigograph EX deck? Would you like what you dislike? Would you keep and would you change about the list? Subscribe to the channel. Post multiple Pokemon trading card game videos every single week here on the Hitmon Channing channel. And yeah, thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, Hitmon Channing out.